What is going on, everyone? Thank you guys so much for joining us here today. We have an amazing episode lined up for you today. In fact, it is called Controlling Uncontrollable Environments in Winter and What You Can Do About It. And with us today, we have two faces, familiar if you're a fan of this podcast. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing today? Doing well, doing well. Hey, everyone. I'm super excited to be back shooting with Off the Wall. Yeah, Ulysses, I'm so happy to be with you guys again. Guys, the pleasure is all mine. We're going to have a great episode. We have a lot to talk about. So why don't we just jump right in and get this thing going. Off the Wall is brought to you by Sheetrock Brand, the unrivaled leader in drywall and joint finishing solutions. See the entire line of products at usg.com slash unrivaled. So today we're going to be talking about controlling uncontrollable environments in winter. And with us today, we have Mr. Jerry Wunderlich, who has over 30 years of experience at USG, and he's the regional quality manager. So if anyone should know about this topic, this is the man to go to. So what does winter do to gypsum and joint compound? And uh, what can contractors do about it? Thank you. That's a great question. We get this question a lot. It's one of the biggest issues that we face in our industry, not just at USG. And the answer is uh, it's twofold. One is the gypsum board itself. The other is the finishing materials. So regarding the gypsum board, Gypsum board is a building material, just like concrete, steel, wood, gypsum board. All building materials have properties called expansion and contraction. If it gets colder, it will shrink, it will contract. If it warms up above your normal occupancy conditions, it will expand. The drywall is unique in that it also has a property called hygrometric properties, where it will shrink when it dries out, it will expand when exposed to high humidity. So drywall is very dynamic. So whenever gypsum board is being installed in conditions that are not ideal, you increase the risk of the drywall joints cracking and or ridging or both. Just a quick example, and this is easy to calculate. We have uh, coefficients of expansion and contraction, just like other materials. So as a quick example, these are approximate numbers. If I have a 100 foot length of gypsum in a long hallway at a shopping mall or hospital, let's say, and I install that gypsum board at, let's say 30 degrees Fahrenheit, and then someday the temperature comes up to 70 or 80 degrees, that 100 foot span of gypsum will grow by up to five eighths of an inch. Wow. So each joint, each panel joint is going to expand and compress against the joint next to it. And that hmm. entire partition will grow up to five eighths of an inch. That's the cumulative effect of each panel expanding a little bit. That will cause a joint ridge to develop, which is a thin line over the joint, very visible. It's very objectionable to a homeowner or to a commercial property owner. It has to be repaired. So that's the risk when you hang drywall in cold weather. And then again, if you have the humidity, the humidity change will add on top of that expansion or contraction, whichever it may be going. So it's quite a bit of movement, actually. So uh, it's just the nature of gypsum. It can't be prevented any other way except to control the temperature and humidity in the space where the gypsum board is being installed. Hey, Jerry, what would the other other deformations be? What are the other issues we see with a wall board and joint compound? When the board is hung in the cold weather and then the heat does come on or the humidity comes on, if it's cold and dry, you humidify as the seasons change. It is that growth of the panel joints. It is going to be joint ridging. A visible ridge about the, the width of a pencil or smaller, that's the primary concern, but also cracking. Cracking uh, can be related to joint ridging. Sometimes they, one looks like the other, but if drywall uh, is in high humidity environment, when it dries out, it's going to shrink back and that can cause cracking. But also into the joint finishing world, the drywall finishing materials, if there's high humidity and cold temperatures at a job site, the joint compounds dry slower than they should. And if other coats of joint compound or the paint is applied before all the shrinkage and drying has occurred, you get what's called a starved joint where the joint looks underfilled, that is a defect that has to be corrected as well. So we would call that delayed shrinkage, right? Delayed shrinkage. Yes, yeah, star joint delayed shrinkage, correct. Perfect. I think it is also important to note that a 5 8 uh, inch expansion on a 100 foot uh, run may not sound like a lot, but um, when, you're, when you're talking about a monolithic uh, gypsum uh, panel system that isn't designed to take on any movement, that can that can create a lot of uh, absolutely a lot, yeah a lot of a uh, lot of imperfections uh, on these projects. So um, I, I think Justin would agree that we've you know seen this in the field. It, it definitely does make a, a big difference if you if you prepare well for these projects. 
for you guys to do commercial construction with steel framing or wood framing, but commercial work, there are control joints that are purposely designed and built into the gypsum partition that will accommodate that movement of expansion and contraction so that you don't get the cracking and the ridging. There was a, a job site visit I was asked to make in Wisconsin several years ago. It was in the springtime when I was there because they had very severe joint ridging going on. It was 80 degrees and very humid in Wisconsin the day I was there. The contractor admitted they hung the drywall in sub-zero temperatures with no control in the space. So here we are in Wisconsin, winter, cold and dry. And then as the springtime came, the temperatures increased, the humidity came up. There was so much joint ridging on that job that the control joints that they properly installed were actually closed shut. They did their job, but couldn't do enough of their job to prevent the ridging that did develop. So that's the most extreme case that I've ever seen. But even smaller amounts, there's enough to cause a defect in the joint that can show up uh, through the finished paint. That's fantastic. We talked about putting in uh, expansion joints in episode two. You guys can uh, revert back to that and check that out. The thing that's perfect about what we're talking about right now is we're getting into that, that seasonal change. And what's funny is here in the Midwest, it was 50 degrees on Monday, 80 degrees on Friday, and it's back down to you know 40 degrees today. So you get these big you know temperature swings. And I know Noe gets the same thing out in California where you know, just not ideal to install our products. That's correct. So out here in California, we do see a little bit of a uh, different climates just year round, right? So in the Bay Area, um, I do see uh, weather related uh, con- uh, issues just spring up. But in the wintertime is really when it, it starts to become a challenge, right? Um, I think that uh, to, to go back to what Jerry said, it is important to keep that minimum temperature in mind, right? So I think a lot of a lot of people kind of think that, uh, you know, we're, we want to keep the temperature at the, you know, at the right spot when we're working on, on the job site, but you got to really think of the overnight temperatures. And that's where we see a lot of issues where contractors are turning off heat, you know, maybe closing windows, ventilation when you really need it in in different temperatures. Um, And these job sites get really cold and humid. Uh, You know, obviously all the building materials are sort of, uh, accumulating moisture through the air with with humidity and uh and then warming up during the day when everyone comes in you know turns on the heater and that's where you really see a lot of these issues spring up yeah no i'm glad i'm glad you brought that up i have a similar experience eight thousand square foot home three million dollar home in st louis everything was done last winter all the drywall was installed everything was finished out without a controlled temperature you suck out all the heat or the moisture, excuse me, and boom, hairline cracks pop up. So it was a good way to explain to the, to the customer and to the homeowner, this was the cause. This lady was like, well, if I'd have known that, I'd have paid to have the heat, you know, put on. And uh, so put it back on the GC and, and the contractors. But we deal with that all over the country um, with, you know, the variance of temperature change and, and the fact that job site conditions don't have controlled temperature. Why don't we move on and we could take questions from someone in the field, someone who's in a position where you might find yourself in. And that's where we come to questions from the mailbag. John from St. Louis asking, I'm finishing a residential job in the middle of winter. How can I try to control conditions for a successful install? And how do I manage expectations for the clients? Jerry, let's start with you, buddy. Great. That's a great question. We get this a lot uh, from our customers. So uh, now that you have more knowledge uh, as a contractor of USG products. It's, I think, most important for you to pass this information on to whomever you're working for, a homeowner, a general contractor, whomever. Let them know what you now know, the importance of proper job site environmental conditions. And then with that discussion, ask them or tell them, I need the permanent HVAC to be operating so I can have stable temperature and humidity for this job site so that I can give you a high quality finish and result for this project. That's the starting point. And depending on whether it's possible or not to get the uh, HVAC operating, if you cannot get that, uh, second would be you need to have temporary heat provided to your job site to control the temperatures as best you can. Being mindful that certain types of fuel, uh, propane for example, will generate a lot of moisture when it is uh, combusting. So you've got to be aware of high humidity uh, as you heat up the space with certain types of fuel. 
Uh, one other comment, when you hang drywall in cold temperatures, if you don't have good temperature control, leave a very, very slight gap at your joints, just barely not touching at the panel edges and ends. That will allow the drywall to expand without causing joint ridging or cracking as the temperature comes up into that space. Uh, Noah, you're just anything else to add to that? Which you, you hit the nail on the head, communication's key. The homeowner, the architect, the GC, whether it's residential, whether it's a commercial project, there's got to be communication. These, these types of things have to be explained and have to be brought up so that everybody understands what can happen if, if the job site's not acclimated. Um, as far as residential and commercial goes, it, it applies for both. Uh, temporary heat, like you said, fans, so, something to get the air moving, something to try to acclimate the building the same all the way around. And then, you know, just deal with the regional differences that are across the country as far as everybody trying to manage the temperature and humidity accordingly. So there, no way is going to be the same. It's not going to be the same in California as far as the same day. The temperature's not going to be the same across the country. So everybody's got to, you know, adjust accordingly to their, their current right. situation. You know, weather's not the same every year. <laughs> so <laughs> that that's, that's kind of, you know, Jerry and I have used that before. We've actually pulled weather patterns and, and rainfall and, and, humidity and temperature to show them what it was when they were installing these materials and what could have caused the problems that they're having. So try to manage the job to the best of your ability with clear communication. What would you say to a contractor or to a homeowner that, you know, is a bit of a time crunch and doesn't uh, maybe won't allow the proper amount of time for uh, acclimation? Uh, is this something that you could wave or is this something that has to be, you're, you're pretty dead set on like this has to be properly done or otherwise it's not going to turn out the way you want it to. So I'm sure Justin will agree with this. We always have uh, contractors that are out there that tell us, so, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years, right? And mm -hmm. no one could dispute the fact that they've been doing it for 30 years and maybe they've been doing it for a certain way. But at some point, if you don't, if, if you don't do these, uh, th these projects correctly, um, you're going to, you're going to see these uh, issues spring up. Right. So I don't know if maybe they're not around when they, when, uh, when, when these ridge lines or uh, center line cracking starts starts to happen, maybe they're, you know, off to the next project. But at some point, it will catch up to you. In addition to what Noe said, I've encouraged contractors to actually uh, get the USG literature and documentation that talks about these issues and to do a short letter to the homeowner or the general contractor explaining, here's what can happen. I will be happy to proceed if you would like me to. But if you have me proceed and these things develop, I can't be responsible for that. I'll fix them, but you'll have to pay me to do this job a second time or to make these repairs. If joint cracking or ridging or these other problems occur, they don't always occur right away. They can sometimes happen two, three, four months down the road. And then the customer's unhappy, the homeowner. So we have to go back and reconstruct what, what had happened at the job site. So uh, it, it gets to be kind of dicey to explain after the fact what might have happened. Even the painters, we haven't talked about the painters. If they're putting paint on top of our product that isn't quite fully uh, dried or set, delayed shrinkage occurs at the joint, you can see a joint showing up. That puts the painter in a tough spot as well. So it's important to communicate that uh, from the drywall contractor to his client, the, the homeowner, the general contractor, say, look, these things may happen. They may take a few months for it to develop. To develop so uh, they need to be aware of that. And it just adds to the uh, importance of getting it done right the first time, just to avoid the problem and to uh, get the best quality result possible at the beginning. You know, it's always a lot easier to get things done right the first time than it is to go back <laughs> and fix everything. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. And this case is no different. Jerry, I'm sorry you have to be leaving us so soon, but we loved having you on board. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, the doctor of drive home himself, Mr. Jerry Wunderlich. Jerry, thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge and information with us today. Thanks for being with us today, Jerry. Thank you. You're welcome. It was fun to be here. I enjoy doing this kind of thing to raise the bar for our customers. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We had a great episode. Today, we learned about controlling uncontrollable environments in winter and what you can do about it. And if you want to learn more, go to usg.com slash unrivaled for lots of resources and to get your unrivaled edge. That's right. There are 12 reps like Noe and I that are here to help you guys and anything you need Click the link, find my rep for your regional rep in your market. 
awesome. And stick around because in the next episode, we're going to go on the other end of the spectrum and we're going to learn about controlling uncontrollable environments in spring. That's right. We'll be talking about the specifics of dealing with heat and humidity out of the job sites. That's going to do it for all of us here. We hope you enjoyed our time. We hope you enjoyed all the information. We hope you put it to good use. But before I let you go, I would just like to say one thing. May your life and your walls always be smooth. Thank you guys so much. We'll catch you on the next episode. See you guys. Thanks. So long, everyone.